I think we often think that being able to play like a virtuoso is really limited to those people who can play the showpieces like Liszt, La Campanella. But I don't believe this is true. Let me show you how I think we can approach our own pieces like a virtuoso. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip, then please do think about subscribing. Simply click the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. When I say to play like a virtuoso, I'm not talking about these flashy ideas such as playing Chopin's Minute Waltz in 60 seconds. To me, that's not virtuoso playing, that's just poor musical taste, really. What I'm talking about is the way that great pianists approach even relatively simple music and turn it into something breathtaking. To demonstrate what I mean, I'd like to take a deep dive into Schumann's Traumerei. Now, this is one of Vladimir Horovitz's favourite encores, so we have the opportunity here to borrow or even steal from the master himself. The great Vladimir Horovitz used to talk about playing with spirit and with heart. So let's start off by looking at spirit. He described this as being true to the spirit of what the composer intended within the music. So then, before we analyse a couple of versions of Horovitz playing Traumerei, let's see what we can work out from the score itself. Let's focus just on the first eight bars, which are of course repeated. When looking carefully, we can very quickly see that Schumann did not intend this to be played as a melody with an accompaniment. Our first clue comes right in bar one. In the bass, we have an F written both as a whole and as a quarter note. And we have the same representation in bar five also. Immediately, this points towards the intention of a separate voice over and above the held note, so the whole note F which is of course tied to another F quarter note in the next bar. By the time we get to bar two, the multi-voice aspect of this piece becomes even more apparent. We now have four distinct musical lines, and Schumann highlights these by the direction of the stem against each note. Let's for simplicity label them one as the highest, through to four as the lowest. This automatically gives us the opportunity to stress certain parts over others. And Schumann indicates a few places already in bars 1 and 2, bars 3 and 4, bars 5 and 6 for example. Here he's marking crescendos, but in one hand or perhaps one line only. Another point of note is that some notes are tied through a change of pedal and therefore we need to hold them with our fingers. If we're not very careful, we might release these notes and lose them as we release the pedal, which would spoil the internal lines of the piece. I've highlighted some of these as you can see. Now let's go back to Horowitz and his view of playing with spirit and heart. We've looked at the spirit of the music already. Then for Horowitz, playing with heart is bringing yourself into the music. 
He is famed for saying that the score should not be treated as a Bible and that the music is often behind the dots. However, clearly, keeping the context of playing with spirit, he still believes the score is to be respected. So what does he do? I wish I could use the actual recordings of his playing here, but I'd likely be slapped with some kind of copyright claim. Therefore, I'll do my best to demonstrate. I'll link a video of him playing this piece and a further version for you to check out later. For me, one of the major things he does is to interplay between the four different lines. If you listen carefully, it actually isn't always the melody that takes centre stage. He will frequently choose a different line or even part of a different line and let this sing out above the melody. From the recording of him playing this in Chicago, we can see him do this very noticeably on the repeat of bar three. Here he chooses the lowest line to bring out. Then in bars seven and eight, he chooses parts of the second line to bring out before taking us into the repeat by bringing out the lowest line. He does it again in bars 10 and 11, and here he takes the third line, then the fourth, then the second, then the fourth again, before returning to the second. And you'll continue to hear this type of interpretation throughout this piece. Looking now at his recording from Moscow, he uses the same technique of bringing out different lines, but of course chooses different ones. For example, in this recording, he opts to bring out the third line in the repeat of bars two, three, and four, and then passes back to the fourth line to take us back to the F chord. Again, this play between the voices continues as we move through the piece. Another thing that he does in both recordings is to emphasize the phrasing. When we look carefully, Schumann uses a beautiful little motif of two eighth notes followed by a quarter note in the left hand. And then against this in the right hand, he basically has four eighth notes that play above it. However, frequently when this motif appears, Horowitz very skillfully makes the final eighth note in the right hand almost disappear. Yet of course it's still more than audible. Horowitz also adds his own dynamics to this piece in some places. I noticed this most in his Chicago recording. For example, he adds a crescendo and decrescendo at the end of bar eight. Then in bars 17 and 18, rather than the crescendo written up to the tempo, he opts for a diminuendo and a ritardando. He adds another ritardando before that written in bar 22, so between bars 21 and 22. And then he lets the entire piece die away in bars 23 and 24. Again, interchanging the different lines and letting the fourth eight notes of each phrase taper off into almost nothing. As they say, good artists borrow, great artists steal. So why shouldn't we be the same? For example, for all the pieces that you're currently learning, take a look and see what versions there are that have been recorded by great pianists. You'll be surprised to find the little touches uh, they bring to the music that we can then work on replicating. I did touch on this in my review of Lang Lang's piano book, which you can watch from the link just up here. So there is no need to wait until we've reached some kind of virtuoso standard. Let's unleash our inner virtuoso on the pieces that we're learning now. Again, to go back to my favorite Vladimir Horowitz, as he said, Never be afraid to dare. So take a look through the pieces you're learning and see what else you can bring out in them. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Don't forget to click the little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.